You can turn your King James Bible to 1 John chapter 5. The world is not going crazy. It is simply returning to normal. <laughs> We're going to do a little study here on that subject and uh, just to encourage you out there with all that's going on in this insane world. Um, show you what the Bible has to say about this world. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19 through 21 says, And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Can we get an amen to that one? <laughs> yeah. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. There's a lot of idols out there in the world. Um, probably the most well-known would be the idol known as mammon. Mammon being a word, Bible word for money there. Uh, kind of the idol of money. Um, say it that way. Uh, a lot of people have mammon as their idol. But uh, our text here says the whole world lieth in wickedness. You know, you can say, well, yeah, you know, I can, I can see that and things. And in the past, you know, um, yeah, the whole world lieth in wickedness. And you kind of have a general understanding of it. But, uh, you know, the last 100 years have been, uh, there's been some good things about the last 100 years. There's been a lot of things to distract us. Let me say it that way. I uh, can't really call them good per se, but uh, a lot that has been there to distract us and very much get us to be worldly as Christians. And um, <clears throat> I look back over my life, um, being born in 1975, there was a lot of things I enjoyed growing up, a lot of innocent uh fun things, fairs and um, amusement parks and community swimming pools and going to the ocean, going to the mountains, you know, going out to eat at restaurants and, and a lot of this stuff. And uh, seemingly, if you would have said to me back then, you know, the whole world's lying in wickedness, I said, well, I guess, but, you know, it's not too bad here. I mean, there's some nice people around and this is a lot of fun and whatever else. But uh, boy, the last two years... We've seen the whole world dying in wickedness. We've seen how many people just went along with everything, how many things that were time-honored and whatever businesses been around for 100 years or multiple generation businesses, and all of a sudden they're just gone. Everything's shut down. And now everybody's afraid of something that you can get and you don't even know you had it. You know, uh, let's destroy the economy locking down over something so ridiculous. But... It's starting to become a lot more clear that the, the whole world lieth in wickedness now. And uh, <clears throat> we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true. If you're saved, you can, you can look out at this whole situation and just say, I cannot believe it's happening like this. This is just insane. You know, it's, it's unreal. How can't people see what's going on? Because they don't have an understanding like you and I do if you're saved. Pretty amazing. First John chapter 2. If you actually study it out, brethren, the, the real world, the, the world has, that has existed, has been one of fighting and war and, and persecution and, and whatever else, and Christians being tortured to death and whatever. That's, that's been reality for a long time. Um, you say, but why, what changed? What happened? Well, you had the Protestant Reformation back in the 16th century get started back in the 16th century, really. If you, the real big part of it, I know that the John Wycliffe kind of got some things going there. Some people start standing up against the Roman Catholic Church back in the 14th century, but it was really the 16th century that saw the big changes with Martin Luther and William Tyndale and then a whole bunch of others that followed them. Um, and it led to the birth of freedom. It led to uh, the modern era, so to speak. We went out of the dark ages, really, and came into a sort of renaissance of period of, of uh, learning and education. And, and, you know, it led to a lot of good times. You say, well, then it's just, it was really good times then. Well, in some ways, yes, but in other ways, it was a distraction. You see, because... Uh, uh, the church that uh, calls the Dark Ages was still there. And um, she didn't go away. All she did is she left the uh, distractions out there for the world to keep people's eyes off of what she was actually doing. You see, while everybody was out there enjoying the good times, 
she was rearming and reloading and getting ready for the next wave of assault, a papal interdict that would come out in 2020, and which it did, which we proved in our one study. But uh, let's, let's see what else the Bible has to say about this world. Very well-known passage here. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world. You hear these people, just loving life, just loving life. <laughs> love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. Uh, how many people, young people out there, they thought to themselves, you know what, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get a good college education so I can get a good job. And now that good jobs are outsourced to other countries. I just heard it's over 1.5 trillion, with a T, trillion dollars in student loan debt in America. 1.5 trillion. Those uh, young people had a lust there. They wanted to be a big success and... And uh, what's it say here in our text? Uh, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It's of the world. It's not of the Father. It's of the world. Huh. They had it all planned out. They thought it was going to be a really great thing, a big success. They would really be somebody in this world after they had their degree and whatever else, go out and get a good job. And that's fading now. And people are losing more and more hope. Heard recently another statistic, one in 500 Americans right now is homeless here in 2022, March 2022. Isn't that something? Well, don't worry, though, because things are looking up. Yeah, uh, we're going to see things really fall apart. John chapter 3. And you have to remember this stuff. We go over the scriptures a lot here. Because you end up forgetting some things. You're supposed to renew your mind and make sure that you have the scriptures so you have a biblical worldview. So you can see the world through the lens of scripture. You look out there into the world, out this way, out my windows here, out towards the world, and you compare all things with the scriptures. Like that. Like binoculars almost. You just look through the scriptures. John chapter 3 Verse 19 through 21. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Hey, can I tell you the truth? About any subject, name the subject? Uh, uh, uh. What's the problem? For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Uh, I don't have any kind of secret society that you have to become a member of or whatever else. Um, I tell people, you know, what I believe. There's no kind of hidden secrets and whatever else here. Uh, why? Because I love the truth. I want people to know that the deeds that I do in this ministry are about light. They're about truth. They're about profiting my viewers. That's what it's about. Um, all the secret stuff and the, the World Economic Forum and all these other, you know, the Freemasons and the Jesuits and the, all the different big groups like that. Oh, this is, sorry, uh, this is behind closed doors, uh, top secret security clearance here, need to know basis, uh, national security. Why? What are you hiding? You wouldn't uh, love darkness there, would you? Oh, that's right. Yeah, you, you would. Why? Because their deeds are evil. Hey, we're just going to uh, plan some, you know, cyber cybersecurity attack type of stuff. We're going to be planning some other things, but don't let this get out. <laughs> we have to hide some data here, cover up some things here, and whatever else. We need to make lists of people that don't agree with us, and whatever else that spread uh, <coughs> misinformation. Um, why? Why? You see. When you get right down to it, we really shouldn't be shocked by what's happening right now in our world. We really shouldn't be shocked by the evil that we're seeing. Why? Because our Bible told us it would happen. 
The Word of God said it's going to get worse. But the news media says it'll get better. Somebody's right, somebody's wrong. I take my stand here. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Any time you read the news or see the news or whatever else, any time you look at any kind of thing coming out, you have to always filter it through the Bible. Okay, this report just came out. It said that the economy is getting better. It said that we're going to have peace. We're not going to go to World War III. There's going to be this whatever, positive. If it's positive, then it contradicts the scriptures and it's a lie. Plain and simple. You know, a whole lot of people wouldn't have been deceived if they had just followed the book like they claimed to. A whole lot of church buildings uh, closed their doors because the government told them to um, because they believed some lies that were put out. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. We shouldn't be surprised with what's going on, with what the Bible prophesied would come. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. Uh, there was some pretty crazy stuff going on in the first century here when the New Testament was written, but uh, Paul's saying, hey, last, the uh, last days, perilous times shall come. It's going to really get bad then. You think, oh, great. Yeah, that's where we're at right now. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. Just watch TV media all the time. Fox News, CNN, whatever else that they're watching and just, just absorbing it. What's the latest? What's the latest? What's the latest? And they don't come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because they love darkness rather than light. They don't come to the light because they don't want their deeds to be made manifest. You know, I like to walk into the bright examining light of God's word, of the Holy Spirit of God, and I walk into that light and I say, Okay, Lord, show me what's wrong. Show me what's wrong in myself, in my heart, in my mind, my flesh. What do I need to correct? Where am I off? Show me, Lord, according to thy word. Examine this up. Open this up and say, okay, examine me, Lord. Try me. We should all want that. We should all desire that. But uh, let's just remember that the craziness that we're seeing out here is actually the world returning back to normal. I really just wanted to put this little study together to, to talk about this because it's so important. Um, it's very easy to get caught up and just say, wow, things are really getting bad. I really hope things get better. Yeah, you know, it would be nice to have some things get better and, and whatever else. And I don't know what all the Lord's plans are in terms of from now till the catching up of the body of Christ. Um, we aren't going into the time of Jacob's trouble because it's the time of Jacob's trouble as I've preached for so many years. It's so simple to figure that out. Uh, the church doesn't need to be you know, purified more or whatever else. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. All sin. Not some sins and, and going into the, you know, see who takes the mark and who doesn't. You know, that will purify the rest or something. No. Um, let's get out, you know, get figured out the differences in Scripture there. And I have so many sermons. If you're new to the whole thing of the, you know, what the timing of the rapture, it's not really a Bible word. The resurrection is the Bible word. Um, whether it's before or after the time of Jacob's trouble uh, or during the time of Jacob's trouble, I should say. Again, the Great Tribulation is not a Bible term. I have to say that repeatedly. But uh, something that you can study. I have plenty of studies to prove um, that the Bible teaches that the body of Christ is caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, very easily proven. Um, been through that for many years. But uh, 
I don't think we're going to be leaving anytime soon. I think it's going to be a number of years yet, and we're going to see a lot of really bad stuff happening as a result. And um, going to be some rough stuff coming. And But just remember, it's not some strange thing that's happening. And why would God put us through this and whatever? Brethren, study history. It's been bad. All right? The 20th century was a century of distractions. I mean, post-World War II, even before that with the whole you know 1920s and everything else, before the Great Depression, there was a lot of distractions that were being put out there. And, you know, theater you know, became Hollywood. And they started to put out the silent films and the radio programs and everything else. And then it was, okay, now we actually have motion pictures and the, you know, all this other stuff. And, and it just got worse and worse and worse to now where people are just so entertained and so gone mentally. You know, uh, the, the vilest people in the world are exalted here on YouTube and uh, in Hollywood as well. You know, just some of the most vile, just wretched sinners. Uh, morbidly obese people doing just disgusting, foul things, and they say, hey, you know, 20 million subscribers or something, and saying, guys playing video games, you know, big, huge subscriber counts and whatever else. Uh, the vilest are being exalted. Why? Well, because that's kind of the way it's always been. Um, but the blinders are going to be falling off. Most people's eyes, they're going to be waking up and facing reality. Um, again, even just the world out here, you know, the vast majority of people, you see them driving by in their new vehicles, you see them living in their nice big houses, they don't even own it. They don't understand the difference between assets and liabilities. They think, I'm, I'm rich and increased with goods. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, the bank owns everything. And as the economy falls apart, that one in 500 Americans that are homeless, it's going to be probably more like 250 out of 500 Americans, about 50% of the population probably will be homeless eventually. Um, how bad can it get? How bad will it get? The microphone down. All right, sorry about that. Just moved a little bit too fast here. Hit my cord and knocked the microphone off the little thing here, little table where I have it. Um, but it's going to get bad. All right, so not going to keep rambling about this whole subject, but uh, just remember, it's not that the world's going crazy, it's just that it's going back to normal. And people are going to start waking up to the reality of some things. So, um, that's going to be it for this study. And uh, I'll be doing two more today out here in the sun porch. It's nice and warm, don't even have any heat, don't need any heat out here because of the passive solar heat. So, but... Uh, We'll see you in the next study. Thank you for watching.